boys and girls. So in reading, we are still talking about different genres, and the genres that we have talked about so far are fiction and nonfiction, and then underneath those, there are little like subcategories, right? So underneath fiction, we have learned these types of fiction. We have learned that there are folk tales, which are fairy tales or um, fables, and they are old stories that have been passed down over time. And then we learned about fantasies, which is another type of fiction, right? And a fantasy is um, one that has some things in it that are impossible, like dragons and unicorns and mermaids and magic, talking animals. So it has some parts of folk tales, but those are old stories that have been told over time. Fantasy stories would be like newer stories, okay? So um, then yesterday at home, <laughs> I got to tell you about realistic fiction. Realistic fiction is a type of fiction, and it's tricky because the things in the story could really happen. Like the book I showed you yesterday about losing a tooth. You know, you guys lose teeth, and some of you do crazy things to try to pull them out, just like the girl in the story. That book could have even been based off of a real person, but they used characters or made up people to tell a story that could really happen. Okay, so there's lots of versions of realistic fiction, okay? It seems like it could be real, but it's a, still a story and it's got fake people in it. Now today, we're gonna get to learn about our first category that fits under nonfiction. Remember, nonfiction books are teaching books, right? They give you information, they usually have photographs, sometimes they have charts, diagrams, table of contents, all that good stuff. Now. One special type of nonfiction is called a biography. It is a book that teaches you about someone's life and it gives you facts about someone's life. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of some biographies. They are from a special section in our library. In fact, the spine of the book even has a letter B at the top for the biography section, okay? So here is a biography about Thomas Edison. He is a famous inventor. So if we look through this nonfiction book, we can tell it automatically has something nonfiction books have with a nice table of contents. It has photographs of the real person, Thomas Edison. It gives us facts like when he was born. It tells about his marriage. It tells about his second marriage and it tells about when he died. So it gives us facts about his life. Definitely true things, right? It shows us photographs of his mother. It shows us photographs of um, him, well, a train, and he. it says up here that he sold newspapers on trains. So it's giving us facts about his life. Here is a drawing, but it's showing what he did, where he uh, worked to be a telegraph operator, <clears throat> okay? Here is him at 15 years old when he worked as a telegraph operator, that's an actual photograph, okay? Here are some images, these are drawings, but they're diagrams to explain what the telegraph is and how he improved it because he was an inventor, okay? So I'm just gonna keep kind of flipping through this to show what a biography looks like. Lots of photographs, right? Lots of real things, facts, lots of dates. This is when he made a patent for a phonograph. So this is something that he made, and it's something, a phonograph is, I think it makes noise. Like it, um, why can't I think of what it does? It plays back noise. It plays back speech. Okay, yeah, people can listen. And then here's where they started recording and sound coming out. This was the first recordings, okay? So it also, um, whoops has some fun facts here, and then like a quiz at the end, and then a glossary of some of those big words. This is a biography. It's a teaching book about him. He's a real person, lots of photographs. Here's another example of a biography. This is about a famous gymnast. I think her name is Simone Biles. <clears throat> so there she is. Real photographs of her. It's got a table of contents. 
It talks about how she was an Olympic star. Look how it's got bold words telling us about the gold medal she won. Here are just some facts, just like there were in the Thomas Edison book. When she was born, where she was born, uh, when she became a professional gymnast, how many gold medals she has, and the championships that she has won as a gymnast. Oh, this even has a map showing where she was born. She was born in, what is that, Ohio? Yep, Columbus, Ohio. And it talks about her early years. So notice that. These stories usually go in order of their life, right? You wouldn't start by saying when they died. You would start by saying when they were born and then what they did as a child and then what they did when they got a little bit older and a little bit older. So here's a little information about her family. See how it's kind of organized with headings and then photographs of her family supporting her in the Olympics. There's photographs of her doing her tricks I don't, maybe maybe it's not called tricks. Her um, her gymnastic moves. Here's photographs of her winning her medals. Little captions telling us about her real life, right? Here's photographs of her coaches and her, um, and thus telling all about those people in her life that made a difference. Here are more about her winning her medals. So these are photographs of her performances when she won the medals and there she is holding one of her Olympic medals all real photographs photographs of the gym where she trained in okay real things more photographs of her getting her her, uh, her medals and the Olympics and some of her moves in the air right all about her life going in order from the beginning to where she is now in her life. There they are on cereal boxes being famous, traveling, right? This also has a glossary and a spot where you can learn more information about her. So hopefully you've learned lots about a biography, which is a type of nonfiction book which teaches you about someone's life, a real person's life, and it goes in order from like when they were born and their early life to the end. And it definitely highlights why they're a famous person. They are usually about somebody famous, uh, somebody who contributed something to history. All right, so I'm gonna be giving you a biography from Epic. You tell me three reasons why it is a biography and it fits in the nonfiction category. Don't just tell me why it's nonfiction. Don't just say it's got photographs and a glossary. Those work, but I need you to tell me a special reason why it's a biography, okay? Be specific. 